Hi, my name is Father Jonathan Meyer, and I am genuinely delighted to be able to be part of this Seekers Track and to help you on your journey in coming to know the Lord uh, and to serve the Lord. So besides being a Catholic priest, I also am a coach. So every single day from about 3 o'clock until 5.30, you can find me at the local public high school. Uh, I've been blessed for the past 10 years to be able to coach cross country and track. Uh, and it really has been amazing. As a priest, one thing that I continually see is the relationship uh, between coaching and being a priest. Because when it comes down to it, we just often don't want to do what we know is best for us. When I look at my athletes and they show up for practice every day, they never want to do the workout that I give them. I'll be like, hey, we're running eight miles today. And they're all like, oh, are you serious? Eight miles? I'm like, do you want to win? Do you want to be successful? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And of course, they all think that like, they can be successful just by running three miles. Or I'll be like, hey, we're going to do a bunch of burpees today. And then we're going to run. And then we're going to do some more burpees. And we're going to run. And we're going to do some more burpees. And they just look at me like I'm crazy. Now, I might be a little crazy. But if you really think about it, this is an interesting thing in life. We have an aversion towards things that are good for us. So think about the things you never want to do. The reality is, is like we don't want to exercise. We don't want to eat good food. We don't want to go to bed on time. We don't want to wake up on time. We don't want to read good books. We often don't want to go to work. We don't want to invest ourselves in actually spending time and entering into like deeper relationships and conversations. We, we have an aversion to the things that are really good for us. And the reality is we also have an aversion. We come with all these excuses to not grow in our relationship with God. When you think about like sitting down and praying, when you think about opening your Bible, a thousand other things and excuses and thoughts come to your mind about like, oh, I'm too busy, I'm unmotivated, it's just too hard, I can't. But that's how it is with everything that's good. I mean, like honestly, if there's a bag of like Starburst or a bag of Skittles or a bag of Snickers, and a bunch of celery and carrots, like, what are you going to choose? If there's a nice, nice, comfy bed or a pair of running shoes, what are you going to choose? We are trained so much in the path of least resistance, and it's part of what we would say, I would, part of original sin and concupiscence is this just total mediocrity. And we, we settle for mediocrity. But we weren't made for mediocrity. We were made for greatness. We were made to get out and go for a run. We were made to eat good food. We were made to go on bed on time and to wake up on time. We were made for greatness, and we were made to thrive. We only thrive when we do these things. So the same is true in our relationship with God. If you want to thrive in life, you got to do what you got to do. Part of being a Christian is living a disciplined life. When we use the word disciple, the fact that God wants you to be a disciple, it means a disciplined life. Jesus clearly says to us that we are to take up our cross and follow after him. To take up our cross and follow after him. That does mean a life of discipline. No one ever said that being a Christian was easy. Eating healthy isn't easy. Going to bed on time isn't easy. I'm not just saying that like that the Christianity is like equal with just like good health, but like follow me in the fact that like it's hard to do what we should do. So you're not alone. You're not alone in not wanting to do the things that you need to do. So the word disciple and discipline are clearly related. The word disciple and discipline are clearly related. If you're going to be a disciple, you got to know discipline because the two of them truly do have a relationship. So as a coach, one of my favorite phrases is that when we change our habits, we change our life. Our life changes when our habits change. So a great question right now is like, what are your habits in life? 
yeah, what are your habits around eating and exercise and waking up and reading good books? But like, what are your habits when it comes to being a disciple? Do you have good habits? Do you read good books? Do you read the Bible? Do you spend time in prayer? Do you have good Christian friends? Because the reality is we don't have these habits, then our life isn't going to be what we want our life to be. And what do we want our life to be? Worth living. And a life that's worth living is a life that's rooted in Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and the Son of Mary. That's what a life worth living is. But if we don't have the basic habits and framework to make that happen, it's really, really hard. So we genuinely do need to change our habits. So I think it's really good right now. Get out a piece of paper. Like, pause this video. Get out a piece of paper and say, what habits do I have in my life? Do I spend time in silence with God? Do I read his word? Do I read good literature, good writing, spiritual writings? Do I do acts of kindness and charity? Do I worship? So growing in our faith will only happen when we change our habits. It's not some magic that's just going to happen. We have to change our habits, and then our life will change. What does changing our habits do? It also makes us more receptive, more open to receiving what God wants to give us. I mean, like, why should we pray? So we can be more receptive. Why should we read? So we can be more receptive of God's word. Why should we go to mass and worship? So we can receive the sacraments. It's about our receptivity to receive God, but to, to do so, we need to be disciplined. To do so, we need to choose to do the things that like, we often don't want to do, knowing that in doing so, there will be such goodness that will come. So are we busy? We are busy. But if we really ask the question, what does it mean to be busy? Like, busy with what? So on that piece of paper, like, ask yourself, like, am I doing, what are the things I'm doing to grow in my faith? And then also to ask the question, like, what am I doing that's more important than this? So did you know, like, if do your math right now, but like, what is 1% of the day? Could you give God 1% of the day? 1% of the day. It's like 14 minutes and 30 seconds. I'll just say 15 minutes. Could we be disciplined enough to say that I could give God, creator of the world, creator of the universe, creator of everything, 1% of the day? Now, of course, you know, we got television and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and I got to, you know, do a lot of things in my day. But do I have 1% of my day that I could give to God? When we think about how much percent of our day we give to the media, to sports, to entertainment, to music to eating, to showering, to sleeping, what percent could we give to God? And that's, we do have to change our habits to change our life. We do need to be a disciple by being disciplined. And the amazing thing is that like right now, there are so many ways to do it. Of course, we can always just unplug and spend time in silence, but to grow in our faith, to seek after the Lord, to know the Lord. Think about like right now in 2020, at your fingertips, of course, you have like, I have books like right here. There are books. You got the Bible. But think about like, there are so many, you can now listen to like an audio book. You can listen to an audio Bible. You can listen to podcasts. You can go to YouTube. You can go out to coffee with someone and just say, hey, like, talk to me about Jesus. But when we think about the call that we have to, to, we have to, we have to wake up. Every resource is out there. There are more resources available right now to you to be an on-fire Christian than there ever have been in the history of Christianity. The question is, will we use them? Will we change the habits in our life? Or will we continue the habits which aren't life-giving? Will we continue the habits that don't bring joy? Will we continue the habits that suck life from us, or we choose the habits that will bring us joy and live a disciplined life that will help us to be a disciple.
if you seek the Lord, part of seeking the Lord is, is changing our lives, not that, so that we're more busy, but that so that we're living more. Not so that we're unmotivated, but that we're really moving with Christ in the Spirit and in God. One of my favorite little things, and this is just like, I, I teach this to my athletes. Uh, you can do, like, there's like tons of research out there. But um, it's, it's ultimately, it, it's referred to as the five-second rule. Motivation, when it comes down to it, like, isn't enough. Like, you can listen to all these talks at this conference, and you can get super motivated. But at some point, you have to act. At some point, you need to move. At some point, you need to do something. So there's this thing called the five-second rule, and it's just a way for us to engage our brain to act. And there's this science behind the fact of just counting backwards, five, four, three, two, one, whenever you have an inspiration, and then just doing it. So if I ask the question right now, like, do you want to read your Bible? The response is, yeah. Okay, but then why don't you read your Bible? So you get an inspiration. I want to read my Bible. Five, four, three, two, one. Pick up your Bible and start reading it. If you don't act right away, most likely what will happen is that then all of the thoughts will come in. Oh, well, I need to do that one other thing. And oh, this commercial is really good. Oh, this YouTube channel that I'm watching is really good. Oh, this chair is really comfortable. Oh, I need to go and cook dinner. Oh, I need, and thus we never do what we actually really should do. We will always, always, always choose comfort and mediocrity over inspiration and truth and good things. And it actually is less than a five second moment in your life where you choose either to act upon the inspiration or you don't do it. And in fact, you most likely will never do it. So, whether it be praying your Bible, whether it be like, you want to know what? I'm going to go and spend 15 minutes in silence. Well, I got this to do and that to do and that. Five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to go. My neighbor they live in isolation, they're lonely, they're scared, they're afraid. I should call them. Five, four, three, two, one, make the phone call. My next door neighbor or my person who lives across from me in the apartment, I should really visit them. That would be the Christian thing to do. Five, four, three, two, one, go. I want to go to mass this weekend. Not exactly sure. Like I'm kind of nervous about going. Should I go? Should I not go? I'm going to call my friend and tell them that I want to go to mass with them. Five, four, three, two, one, go. I'm going to call my Catholic friend and say, hey, Lee, I've been thinking about going to Mass. Like, could we go together this weekend? I'm a little afraid of going by myself. Five, four, three, two, one, go. If we want to live a motivated life, if we want to live a life where we make good choices, we have to act upon those desires or those, those inclinations. God sends us inspirations all the time. He really does. But we just don't act on them. God gives you ideas all the time to be charitable, to be loving, to be patient, to be kind. We don't act on them. God gives you inspirations to pray. We don't act on them. God gives us inspiration to read good books. We don't act on them. I can motivate you all day long in this video, but if you don't act, if you don't change your life and change your habits, I just don't have time. I'm just too busy. I got too much going on. And I'm confused about what the church really teaches. You're never going to know what the church teaches until you get up and study it. You're never going to get out of the doubt and the confusion and the loss until you act. One of the great things about the Holy Spirit, and I, I just call it like the most like, Three powerful words, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Those words are game changer. So oftentimes, like when I think about like, okay, like I need to get up from this chair right now and I need to go pray. Like we have five, four, three, two, one, come Holy Spirit. When we call upon that third person, the most Holy Trinity, like I need, I, I need to read this book. I need to get this article read because this article or this book is going to help me know my faith better and help me to live my faith better. Five, four, three, two, one, come Holy Spirit. I need to act. 
We have such a reluctance to act. We have such a reluctance to do the things that need to happen in our life. Get out a piece of paper and write down the things you want to do. And then five, four, three, two, one, do them. Don't wait. Don't be like, ah, you want to, well, I'm going to start reading that book tomorrow. No, read the book today. Ah, uh, you want to, well, I'm going to go visit my neighbor tomorrow. Don't visit your neighbor tomorrow. Visit them today. Ah, uh, you want to, well, I'm going to study more about the Eucharist. You know, doing, I'm going to do that as a New Year's resolution. No, do it today. You can't put it off to tomorrow because we don't even know if we have tomorrow. But we have right now. And we can choose we can choose right now to act. Being a disciple means you have to be disciplined. Being a disciple means that we, are, we make a choice and a sacrifice not to be busy, but to prioritize what is a true priority. And in those priorities, we then become who God is calling us to be. Hope this little video helped you uh, to get motivated but remember, motivation means nothing until you act. Act. Make your priorities. What's most important? God, truth, eternal life, salvation. You've got to act on it. Through God's grace, may it be so. Thank you for being on this journey, by the way. Don't give up. God has a plan for you.